Hi, my name is Frank. When I saw Julie bravely coming forward recently on her YouTube video talking about the IFFL, I knew I had to do the same because I believe I have information that can help you. Like Julie, I had family that invested in the IFFL, a lot of money. I was able to get the money back by strong and forceful action and hopefully you can too, but it's getting very late in the game. Now most of the money that the IFFL raises goes directly offshore straight to the Honduras, Marindon Mining in the Honduras. When it reaches that country, it's all but impossible to get it back. But today, I don't want to talk about Marindon Mining so much. I want to talk about what other investments the IFFL pushes. The IFFL, of course, the Institute for Financial Learning, mostly talks about the, their Marindon Mining thing in the Honduras. But one other big thing that they push is a company called Arbor Energy. Now, Arbor Energy is an Alberta company that claims to be developing some new technology to clean up the tar sands in Alberta. Now, unlike most of the IFFL's investments, Arbor Energy is publicly listed on the stock exchange, or at least it was for a short period of time. But the thing is, public companies have a stringent reporting requirements. They have to give a lot of information to their investors. Now, Arbor was quickly delisted from the stock exchange because they could not and would not provide that sufficient information. But, during the short period that it was public, that company, Arbor Energy, has provided some financial information because they were required to do so. So, we have a unique opportunity to look behind the scenes and see what the financial information actually says about this company that's supposedly cleaning up this, the tar sands. Now, you can go online directly and get these financial statements there. Now, I've got a copy of them here, and their balance sheet shows that they have about $35 million in assets at the time that the balance sheet is shown, which is December 2004. Now, their startup company, what exactly did they do with these precious resources? Did they go and buy technology that was designed to, to uh, clean up these tar sands? No, frankly, they didn't. Far from it. I'll tell you what they did. It appears on their balance sheet they immediately loaned virtually all of their money 31 million, over 31 million dollars, directly to an offshore company. Guess which one? Marindon Mining in the Honduras. And did I mention, it's a sweetheart deal where they, they pay 3% interest on this loan for a 10-year period. So much for being a tar sands cleanup company. Really, all that Arbor Energy is, publicly listed or otherwise, Arbor Energy is nothing more than a shell company designed to take money out of Canada out of the United States and directly to Marindon in the Honduras, where it is, a, which is a company owned by Gary, Gary Sorensen, who is Milo Bros's buddy. Now, this shouldn't actually be all that surprising, considering that one of Arbor's directors, right there on their website, is Art Wigmore, who has been involved very for a lengthy period of time with the IFFL, and he's been uh, he was involved with the Alberta Securities Commission uh, investigated fraud in the Strategic Metals case. Now, Arbor has been, as I mentioned, delisted from the stock exchange. What that means, for the purposes of the people who have invested in this company, is that there's no ready market for, the, for their investment. They can't sell it to anybody else, they can't do anything with it. Really, it's a question of whether this company will ever perform and provide any returns to them. Well, since they've loaned all their money to Marindon in the Honduras, chances of the company doing well are uh, slim to nil. Arbor, of course, continues to claim that they'll be relisted back onto the stock exchange and all will be well. It will never happen. They don't even have their 2005 financial statements audited yet, and, and certainly they're not their 2006 financial statements. Both of those are necessary to be relisted, and that's just the basic requirements, which they can't or won't fulfill. But let's forget about the company's resources being sent overseas. Let's forget about Art, Art Wigmore, the company director that's being investigated on fraud charges with regards to the strategic metals case. Let's forget about the totally incompetent management of the company that's over two years behind on even producing audited financial statements so that they can keep the company publicly listed. Let's just assume all of that away. Now, for the sake of argument, let's assume that the company is completely legit and it's actively developing their tar sands cleaning up in technology the question is, if that's all the case, even then, would it be a good investment opportunity for IFFL members? Well, in my opinion, 
you would be very, very hard pressed to find any worse investment, particularly for the middle class or, or even the senior investors that can't afford to lose their investment. Far from being the low risk investment that the IFFL claims Arbor is, it's an intensely high risk venture. This is a company that is a classic case of multiple layers of risk, one piled on top of the other. The company faces these risks, any one of which could stop the company and could result in the failure of it and the complete write-off of its value. What are these risks, you may ask? Well, first off, there's the technology risk. Will the technology that they're talking about actually work? It's never been proven. The company is based on untested, untried, unproven system. There isn't even a test plant that's built yet. Now, if it is built, will it work? Will it work when it's built on a larger scale in an actual oil sands, tar sands environment? Let's look at the legal and the patent risk. Has anyone actually evaluated the patent rights to this technology? Will they stand up in court? Or if the technology really does work, will everyone just be able to easily duplicate the technology and go off and run them out of business? And furthermore, frankly, are ordinary investors in any position to evaluate the legal and patent technology? I mean, think about it. This is something that, that venture capitalists look at on a, on a regular basis and, and, and it's questionable for them. But for the average Joe, you have no way of knowing and evaluating that. Then there's the next layer of risk, business risk. Let's suppose that the technology works and they can get it built. What will it actually cost to develop it and to operate it? Can it be licensed and operated so that it actually generates a profit? All of that is completely unknown. Will anyone actually buy this service? If they will, at what cost? Have you seen a business plan? Then let's look at financing risk. Can the company actually develop the technology without running out of funds? They've got to have sufficient funds and, and, and an almost unlimited amount to develop a brand new technology, which is high risk. Now remember, one of the company's directors, Art Wigmore, has been implicated in an investor fraud. Now that alone means that the company has got absolutely zero chance of going out into the marketplace and going to a bank or a financial institution and raising money. Now management has also demonstrated they're completely incompetent by giving all their money away to Marindon in the Honduras, and a company that, by the way, has been sanctioned by the Alberta Securities Commission. And they've also, management has allowed the company to be delisted from the stock exchange. Not exactly a great way of uh, generating shareholder value. Like I said, any one of these risks could easily stop the company from succeeding. Put them all together, though, and even a venture capitalist would evaluate the company as being extremely high risk for their appetite. And venture capitalists are, they thrive on high risk ventures. Why would the IFFL op op offer an opportunity like this to middle class senior investors that really can't stand to lose their investment and have absolutely no tools at their disposal to reasonably evaluate the company's prospects? Well, the answer is very simple. The IFFL is deliberately exploiting the naivety of these small investors. Investors have been misled on many levels. What the company is really all about, where the money has gone, and what the true risks really are. And the IFFL stands to make a lot of money on those investors' naivety. My advice to you, educate yourself. Knowledge is power. See the website at the beginning and end of this video clip. Secondly, immediately see a lawyer and sue your structurist personally for the damages that he has caused you. You may well never get your money back. Then. Go see the Alberta Securities Commission. If you live in the United States, contact the Securities and Exchange Commission. People are standing by. There is also an email at the end of this video. Good luck. Remember, you have been scammed. You need to take action now.